may now be seated. Good afternoon. Magandang hapon muli sa lahat. I'm Professor Jocelyn Ocelero, Associate, finally Associate Professor at the Asian Center. And I will be your Master of Ceremonies. Welcome to um, Collecting Histories, Gems from the Asian Center Art Collection, the launching of this exhibit in celebration of the 66th anniversary of the Asian Center. And uh, coinciding this event, we are also dedicating this program this afternoon um, as a special tribute to uh, the four former deans of the Asian Center. So I'd like to say good afternoon, especially to the families of the four former deans of the Asian Center for gracing us um, in this occasion. And to formally welcome all of us, I'd like to call the Dean of the Asian Center to give his opening remarks, no other than Dean Hemelito A. Sibilia Jr. Maraming salamat, Associate Professor Dr. Uh, Jocelyn Silero. <laughs> Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. To the families. Uh, something is wrong. Can you hear me? Right. Can you hear me now? Some interventions are at Can you hear me? I think there's no more. Yeah, yeah we can yes, hear you now. Yes, we can hear you, Dean. Some... Yeah, we can yeah, hear you. Yeah. Go on, please. Some, Go on. some technical problem, I know. Yeah. To, to the families of Dean Ajit uh, Singh Rai, Dean Aurora Rojas Lim, Dean Mario Meklat, and Dean Eileen San Pablo Bavera, faculty, students, alumni, and friends of the UP Asian Center. It is my honor and privilege as your Dean to welcome you all to the opening of the exhibit of the 66th founding anniversary of our beloved institution, the University of the Philippines Asian Center. This is the first exhibit because by tomorrow afternoon, we will also open another exhibit on Mandala, Tessellation of Cultures, an exhibit which is participated by 25 local artists from Mindanao, Visayas, and Luzon. This afternoon program demonstrates the importance of the UP Asian Center, not just as a pioneer, and leading institution of area studies in the country, but also an institution within the university that houses important anthropological, ethnographic, and historical artifacts that are relevant to area studies. In addition to this, the center also prided itself to have produced prominent area studies scholars, such as Cesar Adib Mahol, Felipe Landa Hocano, Selbano Mahiwo, Ajit Singh Rai, Aurora Rojas Lim, Mario Miklat, Eileen San Pablo Barbera, among others. The title, Collecting Histories, Gems from the Asian Center Arts Collection, will not only show us the valuable collections that demonstrate Asian Center's strong institutional languages in the past, with scholar and institutions from Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, Iran, Japan, China, Korea, India, among others, but also to remind us of our critical institutional role to forge and strengthen academic collaboration with scholars and institutions, to produce scholarship and educate students and the public, and to make impact in our societies, communities, and the Asia Pacific region through our various initiatives in the fields of Philippine and Asian studies. As we move forward, it reminds us the primary role of the UP Asian Center to promote cultural and arts exchanges within or with other units in the University of the Philippines as well as with other cultural centers in the country and beyond. 
the revival of the office of the assistant to the dean for cultural affairs indicated our utmost recognition to the importance of culture and the arts in advancing the interest and in projecting cultural uh, and positive images of the Asian Center in the next years to come. Dr. Matthew Santa Maria, who heads this office and who himself, a university artist, has found a lot of potentials that Asian Center can offer to the community of researchers and scholars using our very own collection. Next year, during the university arts and cultural celebration, Asian Center will participate in this endeavor using the collections that we have on National Center. We'll national ethnographic exhibit and engage in several academic and cultural caravan once restriction to travel is lifted. As we celebrate the 66th foundation anniversary, let me also pay respect to the Asian Center scholars who went ahead of us today, recently. Today, we pay tribute and give salutation to Dean Ajip As Singh Rai, Dean Aurora Rojas Lim, Dean Mario Miklat, and Dean Eileen San Pablo Bavera. In this connection, I also give my sense of respect and appreciation to their families who join us today in celebrating the 66 years of Asian Center scholarship. Their contribution to the field of early studies as leaders and as scholars shall be remembered in our community, in our university, in our country and region. Again, let me give a warm welcome to all of you and please join us in celebrating our funding anniversary. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Dean Sibilia, for that very heartwarming welcoming address and also for reminding us why we are here, why the month of November holds a very special place in our hearts as faculty, staff, you know, dedicated members of the Asian Center. And we're very privileged um, to have this celebration um, unfold today, especially with uh, this uh, program uh, of um, uh, paying tribute to our uh, former uh, leaders no, of our co graduate college. And to further go down, you know, down memory lane and then look back on the 66 years that has been here to give uh, a special presentation on the history, the humble beginnings of the Asian Center, a product of the Asian Center himself, uh, Associate Professor Noel Christian Moratilia. Dr. Moratilia? Okay, good afternoon. Uh, hold on, let me just... Uh, look for my file to share. Okay, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. So, magandang hapon po ulit sa lahat. Okay, I hope you can uh, also see my slides. So, it is my pleasure to present in the next few minutes some of the events that have defined the notable, if convoluted, history of the Asian Center, a history that should be celebrated as indicated in the program, considering the role that it has played in the production of knowledges about Asia and the Philippines. At the outset, allow me to inform you of uh, the key references uh, I'm using for the presentation. Uh, the first is entitled Pioneers and Legends, the Rise and Transformation of Asian Studies at the University of the Philippines Asian Center by an esteemed uh, uh, senior colleague, uh, Dr. San uh, Matthew Santa Maria. Uh, there's also reflections on the development of uh, Philippine studies, the Asian Center experience by Dr. Carol Sobrechea. And uh, the third uh, is Philippine studies, Araling Pilipino or Pilipinolohiya sa wikang Pilipino, pagpapook at pagdadalumat sa loob ng kapantasang Pilipino. Translated as Philippine studies, Araling Pilipino, uh, Filipinolohiya and Filipino redefining context and concept within the Filipino scholarly tradition by Dr. Mary Jane Rodriguez, also a faculty member. Um, in the interest of time, uh, of course, I shall dwell only on important events on ACES timeline and thus leave out other details that uh, would uh, otherwise constitute institutional memory. 
Now, what is now the Asian Center had its origin in the Institute of Asian Studies, um, or IAS, also known as IAS for brevity, which was established in 1955. It was supposedly in response to then President Ramon Magsaysay's vision of creating an institution that would serve as, and I quote, a rallying point in joint endeavors of all Asians to preserve and advance their common cultural heritage. With Magsaysay's dream now realized, the Institute readily performed its uh, functions of producing research relating to Asia as if to serve as leverage against a profoundly Western-oriented curriculum. In the 1960s, UP President Carlos P. Romulo, after whom the old building that used to house the Asian Center is named, extended more assistance to IAS by improving its budget allocation. Cognizant of the role that the Philippines could play in a developing continent, of which a big part was still emerging from the throats of colonialism, Romulo worked towards making the IAS as a regional center of Asian studies. In 1967, IAS was finally allowed to grant academic degrees because prior to that, IAS had just been um, uh, producing research you know, and gathering experts. And just a year after, meaning in 1968, a significant piece of legislation was passed with the aim of further uh, um, firming up the unit's organization and academic reputation. And I refer in particular to Republic Act 5334, otherwise known as an act providing funds for buildings, equipment, and facilities of the Asian Center of the University of the Philippines and for other purposes, which was signed into law, uh, formally establishing the Asian Center, which would eventually absorb its precursor. Section 1 of the law expresses what government officials and academics had articulated about establishing links with other Asian countries while further forging a uh, national identity, quote unquote, in the context of such connections. Like many other institutions, uh, the Asian Center also figured in the political developments or turmoil, depending on your vantage point, of the 1970s. In 1973, then President Ferdinand Marco signed pre Presidential Decree 342, creating the Philippine Center. Uh, for advanced studies, uh, because for brevity, in accordance with the new society's vision of involving higher education institutions in, and I quote, the reform and development of Philippine society and culture, end of quote, because aimed at imparting official versions of Philippine culture, society, and history to Filipino civil servants, especially those who would represent the Philippines in their overseas travels. Uh, the so called pre departure seminars were a component of the cultural liberation program uh, that aimed to teach Philippine culture and society from a largely indigenous and nationalistic perspective. As per the presidential decree, the center would have four institutes and four divisions and overall supervision would be under a chancellor. Uh, the key figures during the six uh, years of the center's existence included Dr. Josefa Saniel, uh, whose book appears here on the slide, uh, then Director of the Institute of Asian Studies, Dr. F. Landa Hocano, Director of the Institute of Philippine Studies, and Dr. Cesar Adib Mahul, uh, whom Dean Sevilla cited earlier, Director of the Institute of Islamic Studies. An intelligence officer, Major uh, Jose Almonte, uh, served as Director of the Institute of Strategic Studies. Among the major developments was the institution of the PhD, Philippine Studies Program, and the MA in Islamic Studies. On top of the MA uh, master's programs in Asian Studies and the Philippine Studies that had been created years before. With questions, however, about its autonomy and integrity as an academic institution, uh, particularly on account of its patent uh, connections with Malacanang, Picasso was abolished through Executive Order 543. The EO provides for the creation of the Philippine Center for Special Studies as a new think tank okay, under the office of the president, therefore was no longer connected with the university and thus superseding PICAS. It also likewise provides for the recognition of the Institute of Islamic Studies as a separate unit within the UP system. And with the abolition of PICAS, the Asian Center again um, um, uh, reverted to its original status. And since then, 
the following have served as head of the Asian Center. And uh, uh, it is, of course, our good fortune to have um, had the following people at the helm of our unit. Um, some of them have already been mentioned, Dr. Saniel, Dr. Rai, uh, Dr. Palong Palong, Dr. Lim, uh, Dr. Malay, Dr. San Pablo Baviera, Dr. Miklat, Dr. Sabrichea, uh, Dr. Gonzalez, uh, Dr. Santarita, and of course, we have the incumbent team, Dr. Candelito Sevilla. Now, to proceed, um, at present, the AC has uh, four existing programs, the Master in Asian Studies, Master of Arts in Asian Studies, the Master in Philippine Studies, and the Master of Arts in Philippine Studies. The courses in the Philippine Studies programs are organized according to, four, to three domains, make the three, Society and Culture, Foreign Relations, and Development Studies. Those of the Asian Studies programs are designed according to regional specializations. Uh, Northeast, Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia, South Asia, and West Asia. Moreover, the course contents, perspectives, paradigms, and research methods for ground multi and interdisciplinary orientations. A survey of the research projects that our students have produced, especially in recent years, show a great variety of topics, as well as a wide array of epistemic and methodological tools, some of which have circumvented once rigid disciplinary boundaries. Another important event was the establishment almost two decades ago of a tri-college PhD Philippine Studies program of which the Asian Center serves as a secretary. So I have just presented the important events in the history of the Asian Center. As we look back, we should also look at the present and look forward. Despite the pandemic, it still remains to be an increasingly globalizing world that aggressively demands integration. Thus, it behooves the university, and in particular the Asian Center, to continue serving as a venue for scholars, experts, policymakers, and even cultural workers to situate the Philippines within Asia and problematize Asia from a perspective that is informed by, by our own culture and history. Salamat po. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, Dr. Maratilia, for helping us and our distinguished guests re revisit uh, the historical timeline of the Asian Center. And I think uh, as we're celebrating you know, the 66th founding anniversary of our dear college, I think it's very important that we also look back on the significant contributions of four key leaders of the Asian Center who dedicated their lives um, in the last uh, few decades, you know, the, uh, a significant portion of that 66 years, um, and also made uh, key contributions to our dear, dearest institution. So at this point, I'd like to call the former Dean of the Asian Center, uh, Dean Joffe Santarita, to offer salutation to the former deans of the Asian Center. Dean Joffe. Thank you very much, Dr. Silero. So, mayong hapon. Good afternoon to all uh, our distinguished participants and attendees, and to the relatives of the honorees, particularly Prof. Ranjit and Rajini Rai, Ma'am Alma and Prof. Uh, Banawi Miklat Jansen, Mrs. Jade Lim Lopez, and of course, Mr. Vito Baviera. I have to beg of, I uh, beg your indulgence, rather, if I cannot, uh, you know. Uh, include all the achievements of the four deans in just 15 minutes, but uh, let me highlight the milestone within the given period. Okay, so let me read this one. It's very important before we start uh, the salutation. Although the last fulfillment of life, death, my death, come and whisper to me. Day after day, I have kept watch for thee, for thee have I borne the joys and pangs of life. All that I am, that I have, that I hope, and all my love have ever flowed towards thee in depth of secrecy. These are excerpts from Rabindranath Tagore's titled Death. Indeed, death is inevitable, but for Indians belief, it is not the end, but the beginning of another life. The years 2020 and 2021 took the lives of four Asian centers deans, one Indian expert and three China specialists in two years. 
two died due to old age and another two due to COVID-19. This afternoon, we are honoring uh, the, their memories and contributions to the growth of the Asian Center of the University of the Philippines and the nation. So let, let me give my uh, salutations to our beloved deans based on the date of their passing. Dean Ajit Singh Rai on January 2, 2020. Dean Eileen San Pablo Baviera on March 21, 2020. Dean Aurora Roaslim on November 16, 2020, and Dean Mario Ignacio Miklat on April 3, 2021. Dean Ajit Singh Rai was the Dean of the Asian Center from 1986 to 1991. Specializing in South Asian studies, he was the author of the Indian Community in the Philippines, a profile, which was published in Asian Studies in 1981, and he also served as the editor of Contemporary Asia, a factual survey in 1967. Through these works, Dean Rai was one of the first Filipino scholars to map Philippines-India relations. He also wrote a brief introduction to the final communique of the preparatory meeting of the ministers of the Second Asian African Conference. Dean Rai served as Officer for Student Relations from 1970 to 1971, an overseer of the Library Museum in 1973, a Program Development Associate in 1978, an officer in charge of the Office of the Secretary in 1980, a Director of the Asian Studies Program in 1982, and he also served as the di Executive Director of the uh, Jubilee Secretariat for the UP Diamond Jubilee Com Committee from 1982 to 1983, and a member of various committees constituted by the UP president, such as the University Curriculum Committee. On a personal note, Dean Rye has an interesting story. Let me cite here in length his story from the article of Mrs. Alma McClatt in the Philippine Daily Inquirer. He came to Manila by boat in 1951 from India. He first enrolled at the University of Santo Tomas and later moved to UP, where he became a student research assistant in 1952. Then he became a lecturer and instructor of political science in 1956 and an assistant professor in 1969. Dean Rye met a smart and feisty Ilonga and never left the country. Dean Rye's uh, Rice presence alone has contributed to the instituting, if not strengthening, of the South Asia track of the Asian Center. He also placed the center in the limelight as the hub of the learning within and outside the university because of his network in national and international levels. He has been a guiding light, a wise teacher. In so many discussion, academic activities, social activities and interactions with people, Dean McClatt found in Dean Rai an outstanding Filipino. Dean Ajit Singh Rai is the Sikh who found love and life of service in the Philippines and his life of service gave him joy until his last breath. The next honoree is Dean Eileen Baviera, San Pablo Baviera, who was the Dean from 2003 to 2009. She was one of the country's foremost experts in international relations and Asian and China studies, and a well-known resource person and media consultant specializing in contemporary China studies, China-Southeast Asian relations, Asia-Pacific security, territorial and maritime disputes and regional integration. She was also among the country's experts on the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, who were convened to discuss how to defend the West Philippine Sea against the incursions of China. She earned her Bachelor of Science, Science degree in Foreign Service, her Master's degree in Asian Studies China, and her doctorate degree in political science, all from UP. 
She was the editor-in-chief of the International Journal Asian Politics and Policy. She was also a lecturer of the Foreign Service Institute, National Defense College of the Philippines. She also served as the president and CEO of the Asia Pacific Pathways to Progress Foundation Incorporated, a member of the Board of Trustees of Economic uh, Social Cultural Rights Asia, director of the Philippine Association for Chinese Studies and former convener of the UPCIDS Asia Pacific Program. In UP, she taught courses on politics, governance, and social and economic development of China, international relations of Southeast Asia, security issues in Asia, regionalism and community building in East Asia, and the Philippine foreign relations. She was also the editor of the book, Regional Security in East Asia, Challenges to Cooperation and Community Building in 2008, and has contributed numerous articles and chapters in books. She has lectured and held visiting fellowships at various academic and research institutions in Australia, China, Japan, India, Malaysia, Singapore, Taiwan, and the United States. Her passing is an undeniably immeasurable loss for her family and for the scholarly community, both in and out of the Philippines. She leaves behind an intellectual legacy that scholars will continue to grapple with and one hopes can continue to guide Philippine foreign policy in the 21st century. Our third honorary is Dean Aurora Rojas Lin, who was the Dean from 1994 to 1997. She was one of the earliest faculty members recruited into the Institute of Asian Studies as discussed by Dr. Moratilla a while ago, which was established in the university in 1955 and which later became the UP Asian Center. In such a capacity, she belonged to the first generation of area studies practitioners in the Philippines. Dean Lim took up English literature at the University of the Philippines and completed in 1959 her Master of Arts in General Studies of the Humanities, combining literature and art history at the University of Chicago. Dean Lim was also the curator of the UP Vargas Museum from 1988 to 1994 and deputy director of the Special Project in Archaeology and Fine Arts of the Southeast Asia Ministries of Education from 1985 to 1986. And she retired from the University of the Philippines by 2000. Even after retirement from the University of the Philippines, Dean uh, Rojas Lim contributed to, the active, to, be, uh, to be active in the academy, writing articles and essays, taking part of conferences and lecturing on China studies at the Ateneo de Manila University, and also in Calayan College. And she also served as the president of the Philippine Association for China Studies from 2001 to 2006. Although I am not her student, and I was not her student, but my constant uh, interaction with her during her visits has enlightened me about maritime history and anthropology of the Philippines. In fact, in 2019, she entrusted to me a dozen of her articles for my own consumption and hopefully for future publication. It is worthy to mention what her colleagues from the Department of Art Studies said about her. Over the course of her career, Dean Lim emphasized the primacy of direct perception and experience in the study of art, while also recognizing the need to flesh out social historical contexts employ interdisciplinary perspectives and insist on the role that art plays in the betterment of Philippine society. She believed in giving back to the country, even if success is not assured. For those who knew her well outside the academy, Dean Lim was a marvelous woman. She had merely to enter a room or into a conversation to light it up, to ramp up the energy level. Not only was she companionable, vivacious, and warm-hearted, she was also visionary, indefatigable, efficient, and no-nonsense. 
a rare combina combination according to Dr. Carol Howe. Above all, she was an inspiration, a model of the life of the mind dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge. Our last honoree is Dean Mario Ignacio Miklat, who was the Dean from 2009 to 2011. Dean Miklat, or Doc Mik, was a well-loved teacher, fluent in Mandarin. He taught under the China program, handling among other subjects, the culture and society course, and the Philippine study subjects until his retirement in 2011. Once college secretary and assistant to the Dean for Administration under Dean uh, uh, Ajit Singh Rai in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Dean Miklat was a student activist in New Pidiliman. He went to China in 1971. And because of the martial law, he stayed there until 1986. Returning to the Philippines, he started teaching at the AUP Asian Center, pursued his master's degree in Asian studies and his PhD in Filipino and made his mark in writing his language and literature. He was also an associate at Likaan, a director of the Centro ng Wikang Filipino, the head of the National uh, Committee on Language and Translation of the NCCA. And he received, in 19, 1998, he received the Campion ng Wika Award from the Commission ng Wikang Filipino at the, and the Union ng Mga Manunulat sa Pilipinas Lifetime Achievement Award in August of 2013. Dean Miklat's notable publications, including or includes, uh, include mga kwento ng kabayanihan in 1988, Pinoy Odyssey in 1989, Beyond the Great Wall, a family journal, and the secrets of the 18, 18 mansions. And his post publications are his novel, 21 West, 4th Street, together with his book of poetry, Kailan Diwata at 70 Plus, Natula at book and book of essays, 100 Flowers and 100 Philosophies. According to the article of Ruel de Vera, Philippine Daily Inquirer, anyone who has ever met Dean Mario Miklat will remark on his politeness, his quiet presence, but also his deep interest in scholarship. Lastly, to end this salutation, let me direct you to the wisdom of Confucius when he said that we should keep the dead before our eyes and honor them as though still living. To our four deans who have joined the ranks of immortals, I said, ranks of immortals, you are sorely missed, but your memories and contributions will not be forgotten. Rest in power, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Thank you very much, Dean Santarita, for honoring our four great deans of the Asian Center. And true enough, 15 minutes is not enough to, to look back no, and recollect all those wonderful achievements that were um, dedicated by these four key leaders of our institution um, to, uh, uh, I guess, pave the way for uh, furthering the success of, of uh of the Asian Center. So we would like to thank, uh, of course, in spirit, uh, we remember the greatness and the unselfish um, service uh, um, dedicated by these four key leaders to our college. And thank you very much. And we have come at this point to the highlight of our uh, program this afternoon, and that is the presentation of the Posthumous Award, the presentation of the Pamana Sabayan Award. And at this point, I'd like to call on, once again, Dean uh, Henelito Sevilla Jr. Uh, to be assisted by Dr. Matthew Santarita uh, for the handing of the uh, plaques um, to our uh, to the families of the four former deans, Dean Sevilla and Dr. Santa Maria. Yes, uh, go ahead, Dr. Santa Maria. And ito ba si Dr. Santa Maria? Yes. Sir, are you there? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so I think our first awardee is uh, Dean Ajit Singh Rai. 
and Dean Sevilla Okay. Okay, I think Dean Sibilia, you have please do the honors of reading the the, the citation. Maybe I can just ask uh, Miss Dane. I don't have the text with me. Dane, are you around? I think uh, it's I think yes, it's sir. visible, Dean. It's flashed in the screen. Yeah, the it's it's flashed already. The plaque is. Yeah, yeah but it it's not readable. Small. Can we ano, enlarge it? Okay, ano? sige. Kaya ba? Okay, uh, Asian Center University of the Philippines Asian Center Pamana Sabayan Award is presented to Ajit Singh Rai in recognition of his uh, exemplary service, unwavering dedication, and outstanding leadership to the Filipino and Asia Pacific communities as Dean of the UP Asian Center. Given this 22nd day of November, 2021, signed, your strolling. Thank you. And to accept the award, we'd like to call on uh, Rajit, uh, Professor Rajit uh, Rai and uh, Lourdes Rajini Rai, son and daughter of Dean uh, Rai, to give a short message. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, can you hear me now? Good afternoon. Yes, yes sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you, uh, Dean Sevilla, uh, former Dean Santa Rita, my friend and Professor Matthew Santa Maria. Uh, and all those uh, members of the Asian Center faculty who are present here today. Good afternoon, colleagues and friends, uh, Tita Almal Miklat and uh, Banawe Miklat. Okay, uh, we, we thank the Asian Center family for this kind uh, a tribute, uh, not just to my father, but to all these outstanding Filipinos who were former deans, deans of the Asian Center. You know, um, yeah, it's a well-known fact that uh, my father, Ajit Singh Rai, you know, had two great loves in his life. No? The first one was our family of nine, okay? And of course, the Asian Center. Yeah. My mother would often complain that she had to compete with Romulo Hall for my dad's affections. No? Indeed, he was truly, madly, and deeply in love uh, with UP and the Asian Center. And uh, Dean Santarita is a, a, a very good to have... Uh, highlighted many of the efforts of uh, my dad, both as a professor and as a dean no, uh, of this uh, esteemed institution. You know, uh, professor Rai will be remembered for his efforts to enhance the center's role as a hub for area studies in the country and the region. He supported initiatives to strengthen a curriculum, uh, the curriculum program. Uh, you know, he, he was a big champion of South, the South Asian Studies program and strongly supported the Philippine Studies program. He was, uh, yes, indeed act active in trying to establish linkages to expand the center's network in the region. Uh, and he was also excellent no, in generating resources for the faculty and staff of the, of the center. Uh, he, in a sense, though, he was tireless no, in his uh, advocacy okay, uh, uh, for the Asian center. And at, at some point no, towards the 80s, as the your, your, your um, historical discussion earlier showed now after martial law, uh, it became a very clear that not only was uh, it, it, it that what not only was it uh, the, the standard contribution for research and teaching as well as extension, my dad also had to actively defend the center at some point in its history when uh, in the university, um, its institutional uh, role was uh, being questioned. No? Um, he was a staunch, he was best known actually for us being a staunch defender of the Asian Center as an academic institution during his time. He was tireless in adv advocating the vital role of the Asian Center in the life of the university. The Asian Center, we believe as a family uh, and myself as an academic, plays a, played an important role then and continues to play an important role today in the, in, uh, in the University of the Philippines. And it has to be strengthened, it has to be supported. Uh, I'd like to just emphasize that uh, Professor I spent four decades of his life in the service of the of UP and the Asian Center. 
and uh, he started with the Institute of Asian Cent of the Asian Studies Program, and uh, where he, you know, he believed in teaching, research, and uh, mentoring, and uh, you know, um, he, he spent all his life, uh, and it was it, it was a great fun for him as an individual, no. So in closing, I would like to say that I'm very proud of my dad's work in the center and his life as an academic. Um, his life was dedicated to teaching and to serving others. And I hope that he, while he's an example and uh, inspiration to myself, that it will continue to be an inspiration to others who, uh, who are also working here in the university and working for the Asian Center. Again, thank you to the center and its faculty for organizing this occasion to remember my father and all the other former deans of the Asian Center, uh, all uh, outstanding Filipinos, and to honor their uh, life's work, their dedication, perseverance, selfless commitment, and their academic contributions mm -hmm. that they have uh, shared through the decades in the service of the Asian Center, the University of Philippines, and our country. Maraming salamat. Um, happy anniversary to the Asian Center. And thank you for inviting us here. Thank you very much, Professor Rai, uh, for your message and, and the warm acceptance of the award. And on to our second honoree. Um, at this point, I'd like to invite once again Dean Sevilla to read the Pamana Sabayan plaque um, to honor Dean Aurora Rojaslin. Can we have, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, good. All right. Asian Center, University of the Philippines, Asian Center Pamana Sabayan Award is presented to Dean Aurora Rojas Lim in recognition of her exemplary service and wavering dedication and outstanding leadership to the Filipino and Asia Pacific communities as Dean of the UP Asian Center, given this 22nd day of November, 2021. Signed, uh, Dr. Hinelito Sevilla, Dean of Asian Center. Thank you very much, Dean Sevilla. And um, I'm not sure if Miss Jade is fine uh, to uh, accept the award and uh, deliver a short message. I'd like to call on the daughter of Dean uh, Roxy Lim, uh, Miss Jade Lopez. Miss Jade? <laughs> cannot hear you. Hi, Ma'am Ja. Um, is it okay if you can read her message in the chat? She was able to type. Ma'am, I sent her. it to you, Ma'am, sa, sa FB. All right. Okay, on behalf of Ms. Jade, allow me to read a very brief message. Uh, thank you. My mother would have been thrilled and proud to be a part of your recognition. I'm so proud of also of the institution that she devoted much of her years to. Thank you very much, Ms. Jade. Uh, and thank you for gracing uh, our uh, uh, program today. Uh, so bad that you have uh, some technical issues there. Um, but uh, we would like also to thank um, Dean Aurora Rojas Lim. Um, I'm very uh, also privileged to have uh, seen her, witness her, attend a lot of uh, activities, activities of the Asian Center every time she's available when she was still alive. So for that, I am truly grateful. Okay, um, next we'd like to continue our uh, awarding ceremony, this time to honor the late. Dean Mario McLeod, I'd like to uh, call on once again Dean Sevilla to read the citation on uh, Dean McLeod's plaque. Dean Sevilla? Yes. Uh, 
page. Please share the, the plug. Okay. All right. Asian Center University of the Philippines, Asian Center Pamana Sabayan Award is presented to Dean Mario I. Miklat in recognition of his exemplary service and wavering dedication and outstanding leadership to the Filipino and Asia Pacific communities as Dean of the UP Asian Center, given this 22nd day of November, 2021. Signed, Hinilito Sevilla Jr., Dean Asian Center. Thank you very much, Dean Sevilla. And uh, to virtually accept the plaque of recognition um, is the wife of Dean McLeod, Mrs. Alma McLeod, and also Professor Banawe McLeod Jansen. Uh, also, to, uh, we would like to request you to give a short message for the Asian Center. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Ako po, Banawe, ang magbibigay ng mensahe. Magandang hapon po, mali sa ating lahat. UP Asian Center is a huge part of Mario Ignacio Miklat and our whole family's lives. This is where Tatay worked from when we got back from China in 1986 until he retired as dean in 2011. In our nuclear family, Nanay or Alma Cruz Miklat made money for our comfortable life while Tatay provided the path to my sister and my path to the UP education we are so proud of. Through every earthquake, tragedy, and big family celebrations, the UP Asian Center staff and faculty have always been part of our family. Dean Rai and Professor Asiri Abubakar are some of Tate's best friends. And we all have the highest regard for Dean Saniel, Dean Santarita, Dean Baviera, Dean Lim, and of course, Dean Sevilla, and to all of you here. Thank you, as well, to the Asian Center Library support for Tate's book, book set mentioned by Dean Joffe earlier and launched posthumously this past September. It is an honor to receive the Asian Center Pamana ng Bayan Award and celebrate with you collecting histories. Thank you for having our family in this UP Asian Center family art exhibition and 66-year celebration. Magandang hapon po mati. Maraming salamat po, Professor Banawe Miklat Jansen, uh, for that very sweet message. And we always feel like you're part of the huge family of the Asian Center every single time. Um, and finally, our last honorary, um, I'd like to call once again, one more time, Dean Sevilla, to read the citation on the plaque uh, to honor uh, Dean um, Eileen San Pablo Baviera. Thank you, Ju. Asian Center, University of the Philippines. Asian Center Pamana Sabayan Award is presented to Dean Eileen San Pablo Baviera in recognition of her exemplary service and wavering dedication and outstanding leadership to the Filipino and Asia Pacific communities as Dean of the UP Asian Center. Given this 22nd day of November, 2021, signed Hinelito E. Sevilla Jr., Dean Asian Center. Thank you very much, Dean Sevilla. And to virtually accept uh, the award and also deliver a very short message. Can we call on uh, Mr. Vito Baviera, son of Dean Baviera? Hello, everyone. Vito? Um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right. Um, first of all, uh, congratulations on Asian Center for the 66th anniversary. You know? Um, and also, I would like to share my um, sincerest condolences to the other families of our past deans. Um, for for our family, uh, we really thank you uh, so much for honoring my uh, mom like this. Uh, from from my experience, because uh, it's been 
it's been parang Asian center to my mom was parallel to me growing up. Um, some of you would remember that little kid na she was always bringing along. That was me. Um, no, nandun pa sa lumang uh, building. Uh, that was where her office was. And then, nung tumanda ako, naging high school ako, nagkaroon na bigla ng GT uh, Toyota building. Uh, so, it's really, you, you can really see the, ano eh, it's, it's how she treated her work as if it was her own, you know, uh, child. So, I'm really happy na ito na yung pinagbunga ng kanyang trabaho. Um, and again, thank you very much for this honor. Pinalampo. Thank you very much, Vito, uh, for your message. And indeed, we we always we miss everyone, of course, including Dean Baviera. I was one of the graduates, the products of uh, her administration. So I'm very grateful to also um, um, re remember her uh, with so much gratitude. Um, thank you very much for that. And that ends the awarding ceremony. And uh, congratulations once again. And thank you very much to the beloved families of the four former deans of the Asian Center for uh, joining us this afternoon. The celebration is uh, meant to be shared with you all. And at this point, um, we are done with the ceremony, the awarding ceremony. Um, and now we've come to the other significant part of these affair and that is um, the launching of the exhibit no? uh, collecting histories gems um, what's the complete title gems from the Asian Center art collection exhibit and no other person is were, uh, um, deserves this moment to talk about um, the exhibit that we're having uh, from this month up to February 28th of next year, no other than the Assistant to the Dean for Cultural Affairs, uh, Dr. Matthew Santa Maria, to share the curator's notes. Dr. Santa Maria. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Celero. And uh, I'm afraid this might be the boring part, but allow me to uh, share with you what we have found out about this uh, wonderful collection of the uh, Asian Center. The Asian Center possesses one of the most uh, the rarest collections of art and artifacts in the whole University of the Philippines system. Its ethnographic collection was established by no other than the Philippines' foremost anthropologist, Dr. F. Landa Hocano. And through Hocano's work in the college unit's museum laboratory, that the collection came into being. As such, this, co uh, this collection continues to be well documented in the archives and records of the center. The center's art collection, on the other hand, had a less visible and less documented provenance. Most of the artworks that hang on the walls of the Romola Hall were gifts from currently serving and retired professors, visiting scholars, and academic delegations from overseas and other private organizations. It is safe to say that most of them were not purchased with the intention of constituting an art collection. That being said, the collection through social accretion is made even more significant in terms of meaning and memory. These artworks may be viewed as records of the Asian centers continuously expanding circles of goodwill within the country as well as the Asia Pacific region. As an exhibit of gems, the Asian Center wishes to dedicate this undertaking to the late Eileen, Dr. Eileen San Pablo Baviera, Dr. Aurora Lorjas Lim, Dr. Mario Ignacio Miklat, and Dr. Ajit Sin Rai. Our forebears who passed during the period of 2020 to 2021. They are all veritable gems in their fields of China and India studies. Their passing is a great loss to the academic traditions that they have established in the Philippines. We hope that this exhibit will do their memories great honor. Eight categories compose the Asian Center Art Collection, displaying a full range of artworks in terms of subject matter and medium. Allow me to walk you through some of these works. 
The first category is that of religious images or religion related subjects. 12 images constitute the category uh, of religious images. And they are indeed one of the most beautiful part of the Asian Center Art Collection. Perhaps one of the most interesting artworks in this group is one that portrays the majestic spires of the Angkor Wat Temple. Angkor Wat is the world's largest religious complex possessing a total land area of 162.6 hectares. Now, this work is most interesting as our records show that this piece was donated by His Excellency Xi Hanuk, the Cambodian ambassador to the Philippines in 1954. How exactly His, Excellently, His Excellency is related to King Xi Hanuk, we still do not know. But a bit of research will clarify this in the future. As this was donated in 1954, this makes it the oldest painting in the Asian Center collection, predating the college's predecessor, the Institute of Asian Studies, which was established in 1955. The next piece is Guan Yin, or the Bodhisattva of Mercy. This is done by a Chinese painting master, Zheng Huxi. The Bodhisattva is a soul who purposely delays entry to Nirvana to help other souls towards the road of enlightenment. This subject is done with a very, with a beautiful freestyle, bold strokes of the brush. The inscription in the artwork says that it, a, it is an impromptu painting made to prove the common origin of calligraphy and painting, and that it was done after the completion of a series of lectures given to the students of the University of the Philippines. Zheng, the artist, is a native of Hunan, but the inscription indicates that this gift is from an artist of the Republic of China or Taiwan. The next piece is Al Asma Ul Husna, or Navudul Dukoda in Persian. This is the 99 names of Allah. The beautiful names of Allah may be seen in either the Quran or the Hadith the words or actions of the prophet Muhammad. This calligraphic work on ink or ink on paper is done by Dr. Tandis Tagabi, who did an exhibit at the Asian Center sponsored by the Iranian embassy in 2017. This particular work is done in the Nata'ik style of the Perso-Arabic script in the Persian language. This style is associated with the works of great Persian poets such as Rumi and Hafiz. The next category is that of the subjects of ethnographic interest. There are 15 pieces uh, in this category of artworks in the collection. The everyday scenes in life of common folk are portrayed in various media and styles. The first is preparing the evening meal done by a modern expressionist painter named M. Sivanesan of India, and it is dated in 1970. Sivanesan was born in Madras in 1940, and he joined the Madras College of Arts and Crafts in 1956. He is quite a popular in, artist in India, enjoying support from a wide range of art lovers. He maintains art studios in Chennai, Mumbai, and New Delhi. The exact provenance of the piece uh, still cannot be ascertained. It may very well be a gift presented to the center either through its two indologists, Professor Ajit Singh Rai, or perhaps Dr. Juan Francisco. The next is a piece called Mangingisda by the great a social realist painter, Filipino social realist painter, Leonilo Neil Dolorican. Neil Dolorican unfortunately passed on 16 July, 2021. Dolorican was Dean of the University of the Philippines College of Fine Arts from 1998 to 2021. 
also quite a, a prolific in producing editorial cartoons, Neil has become quite a public intellectual in the Philippines and his works are always awaited in all venues, not only in the University of the Philippines. The next work is titled Tiger Hunt. This is a rare work done in the so-called Mughal style of traditional Indian painting. The pigment used in this work is most probably gouache, a material no normally used in silk paintings. As in many works of this style, the artist is anonymous. Nevertheless, the quality of the work is quite apparent in the drawn figures of the three hunters, the elephant, the horse, and the hunted tiger itself. The next piece is a Ryukyuan house and garden, a work done in bingata or rice resist dyeing technique used on textiles that is unique to Okinawa, Japan. Ryukyu or Luchu in Chinese sources is the old name of Okinawa when it used to be a separate kingdom from Japan, maintaining its sovereignty from 1429 to 1879. What is quite interesting about this work is that it is done on fiber, and most probably this is Busa Textilis or the Abaka plant, which we share together with the islands of Okinawa. The next category in our artworks will be landscapes or country scenes. Four pieces belong to this category and allow me to share with you three of them. The first is titled Cove with Vermilion Trees. This piece is a modern rendering of a traditional theme of a seascape. The artist sparingly uses color, possibly aquarelle or some form of col colored ink in this particular work. Standing in front of the landscape, the viewer is invited to imagine its location on top of a rocky promontory that opens a majestic view of a sheltered cove. What is quite interesting here is that there are inscriptions written in Chinese, which reads, clear waters flow over stones of crystals. This reflects an aesthetics of romanticism, that of a countryside ideal or a utopia away from the madding crowds of the city. Nature heals as man constantly tortures himself with artifice. The next work is an interesting piece titled A Fishing Village. This piece is most unique as it is made out of lontar palm leaves. Technically, it is a collage made out of cutouts of palm leaf that are systematically arranged and glued onto cloth in order to form a composition. Lontar leaf come from Borassus flaberilifer, a type of fan palm from which arak or toddy is extracted. Looking at the style of the houses in this composition, this is most, most likely to have come from Indonesia or Malaysia. The roof lines of the houses portray, uh, portrayed in the piece are reminiscent of Minangkabau soaring rooftops that evoke the shape of carabao or water buffalo horns. The next piece is a forest stream in twilight. This painting is a magnificent piece done in the palette knife painting technique. This piece was donated to the Asian Center by Professor Virginia Flor Agbayani, formerly the college secretary of the College of Fine Arts. Agbayani is a well-known professor who has mentored, among others, the national artist Jose Hoya. Agbayani is also known as the Grand Dean of Philippine Art education. Who exactly did the work is not clear to us as the signature affixed to the lower right hand corner is not readable. It is possible that the piece may have been done by Agbayani herself, perhaps signing somewhat differently 
from most of her signatures found in her other pieces. The next category in our artworks would be historic events or scenes. Three pieces of artwork constitute this category in the Asian Center collection. The first is titled Battle Scene Between the Siamese and Burmese with Elephants. This type of image is often um, mistakenly referred to as a temple rubbing. Technically, a temple rubbing must be produced by actually getting impressions by rubbing charcoal or other pigment on paper placed over walls, doors, and panels of temples. As this piece did much to damage tangible property, making bar reliefs even more ba or raw, it was later on banned by countries with such cultural heritage. Nowadays, a panel of wood is specially carved for images such as this one produced. The image here celebrates a defining moment in history known to the Thais as the Burmese Siamese War of 1584 to 1593, showing the battle between Prince Narisuan of Ayutthaya defeating the crown prince Ling Yi Shua of Burma. The next piece is titled The Continuing Revolution. This is another piece by Neil Dolorikon. And this, an, this is quite an impressively large uh, piece. And uh, um, the, well, what is most interesting about this piece is that Dolorican uh, stays quite um, um, uh, quite uh, uh, interestingly uh, stable in his portrayal of fishermen uh, in the lower right hand uh, corner of the piece. And uh, I think we do not have this, the correct slide for that, but it is a big piece which reflects the Mangista at the lower right hand corner, showing the importance of uh, fishermen in this country, which is known as a maritime, uh, maritime state. The next piece is titled, the liberation of Manila. And this portrays a scene dating back to February, 1945, when Manila was liberated from the Japanese, but at the same time, Manila also burned and was destroyed. What we now have is the um, uh, piece by Vars Rosal, and um, this piece is quite intriguing as we can actually see the tower clock of the Manila City Hall at the far background. And in the foreground, we can see American soldiers um, echoing the movement of the spoliarium of Luna, dragging dead Japanese soldiers uh, in their um, liberation of Manila. The next category of art in our collection would be, can be called auspicious symbols. Four works comprise this category and they usually use seasonal motifs of plants or animals. The first is titled Flowers of the Four Seasons. This assemblage of flora is a standard theme found in Chinese, Korean and Japanese paintings. The genre celebrates the beauty of the four seasons represented by four plants found in this work. Bamboo remains lush and green even when covered with snow and therefore it represents the resilience of life. The plum blossoms are the first flowers to bloom among the bushes and trees of the Northern climes. It, is, it therefore represents hope of the coming spring. The grass-like Oriental orchid, a species of cymbidium, is appreciated for its graceful foliage and very, and it is quite sweet smelling, therefore celebrates the beauty of summer. This work is by the artist named Ping Shang, 
and the calligraphic inscription done by the artist indicates that the work was created to commemorate the conclusion of a series of intensive workshops conducted by the artist from mainland China. The next, pre, uh, next piece is titled Cranes, Bamboo, and Plum Blossoms. The cranes depicted in this work is the Manchurian or Japanese crane, which comes with the scientific name of Goose Haponensis. They are also called red crowned cranes or dancing cranes. They are seen as symbols of luck, longevity, and fidelity. This work is quite interesting as it is not done in pigment. It is actually done uh, through a brocade weaving technique, making the whole piece a textile art piece. The next piece is titled, A Hundred Cranes. This is perhaps one of the more impressive artworks that the Asian Center possesses. Instead of having a pair, we now have literally quite a number of cranes. And uh, as they are seen uh, as a symbol of fidelity, the gift giver giving to the Asian Center, the University of the Philippines, means to have a continuing relationship between the two institutions. And this gift comes specifically from the Xiamen University Institute of South China Sea Studies. And it is said that the, uh, this is given by the delegates who visited the Asian Center of the University of the Philippines in January, 1999. The next category in our collection are historical personalities. And we only have two pieces in this category. The first is a portrait of Dr. Sun Yat-sen. And this painting was created by Li Lingqiao in 1965 and was donated to the Asian Center by the Republic of China or Taiwan. Li Lingqiao is an internationally renowned Chinese painter who in 1968 received the Golden Goblet Award from the Art Society of China. This portrait is based on a more famous photograph of the Chinese leader who is revered in both the mainland China as well as in Taiwan. The next piece is titled Ho Chi Minh and the People. No other leader in Southeast Asia commands such great reverential treatment as Uncle Ho. The great Vietnamese leader served as chairman and first secretary of the Workers' Party of Vietnam. And later on in his career, he led the Viet Minh independence movement from 1941 and onwards. The organizations that he established later on helped defeat the Americans in the so-called Vietnam War. This work is made out of traditional Vietnamese lacquer. Another category in our collection may be called the recreated past. And we have two major pieces that belong to this category. The first is what we call the Barato mural, portraying the Philippine Stone Age. Calixto El Barato, one of the artists working with Dr. F. Landa Hocano, uh, made this um, mural in 1979. And it is most interesting as he based his portrayal of Philippine Stone Age on the data or information that is available for archeological studies at the time. You can see here very rare portrayals of the Philippine rhinoceros or rhinoceros philippinensis, which is already extinct, as well as the Philippine elephant or the elephas beeri, likewise extinct. The next is the 14 mural. And this, uh, this um, portrays Philippine early encounters in maritime trade. This is done by Jose Fortin, another artist who worked very closely with Dr. Hokano, and this was likewise made in 1979. In contrast to the Barato mural, the era portrayed in this one is more recent prehistoric, from 1900 to 
from left to right, we see uh, all sorts of technologies and activities, and most notably the uh, practice of maritime trade with a figure of a Chinese merchant somewhere in the middle part of the mural. The last category in our, um, in our art collection will belong to the other artworks. And I will only discuss one example here as the others are quite small. And this is titled Bintana Ni Bibiana. And this particular work was donated to the Asian Center by uh, the late Dr. Mario I. McClough. This work is done by Cherie Altea, a Filipina artist based in Singapore. It portrays a beautiful woman looking out of her window, surrounded by colorful flowers and exotic foliage. The artwork is decidedly decorative and most certainly immediately catches the eye in its use of primer, primary colors. What we see is not just a pretty painting, but one that reminds us of innocence that has far faded from our present realities. Yes, there is a place for such a painting in the Asian center, for it alludes to the strength of imagination to capture an idea, to bring obvious joy to its beholder. With all of these categories and some of the examples shown today, the next question is, where should the collection go? In mounting this exhibit, this curator and his team, for the very first time, had to interrogate the production and origins of each piece in the collection. This process was needless to say, very tedious, yet quite rewarding. Some of the information that we discovered about some of the pieces had to be gleaned from donation records, memos, as well as oral narratives from those who have long retired from service. Indeed, much of what we have done can be summed up as a process of recollection of information pertaining to each one of these pieces. Much work still needs to be done as many of the pieces need to be ascertained in terms of authorship and provenance. From now on, however, no piece given to the Asian Center will not go through the process of rigorous documentation. A good collection after all rests on this foundation of good record keeping. The next step is to ask where the process of collection will proceed. Many more pieces will undoubtedly be donated to the Asian Center. The gift giving tradition of individuals and institutions in Asia assures us of this supply of art and artifacts. Still, one must ask the question whether a process of collection should be established to enrich the present collection of artworks. No, of course, is not an option. And where need beckons and budget permits, such a direction in collecting will emerge. For now, the number of items falling in each of the categories mentioned above already indicates the strengths and weaknesses of the collection. If the Asian Center is to bring the reality of Asia to the Philippines and the reality of the Philippines to Asia, the three categories may be pursued as directions towards collecting. Two of these three top the various categories in terms of number. These would be number one, the category of works that depict images of ethnographic interest, comprising of 14 works. And number two, the category that depict religion or religious imagery, which constitutes about 12 works. The third category can be created by combining two categories relating to history. And this third category can then be called the category of historical events and personalities, which can serve as the third thrust of the Asian Center's collection. The collection of art belonging to these categories is not only consistent with the center's mandate as an educational institution, but also underscores 
the advocacy for international understanding through the arts. With these three categories, a well-defined thrust for our art collection can be created and a clear direction for the Art Asian Center Museum can be charted as an institution within the University of the Philippines and the Philippine art world. Thank you very much for being part of our afternoon. And thank you very much for visiting our exhibit. I do hope that you enjoy the artworks and I do hope you also enjoy each other companies as you view the artwork together. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you very much, Dr. Santa Maria. And you have just elegantly presented the art collection of the Asian Center, just like a legitimate museum curator. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, as I've said, uh, the exhibit will run from today uh, up to uh, until February 28th of uh, the following year, 2022. So you're all welcome to visit um, the exhibit at the GP Toyota Asian Cultural Center. And uh, we hope to see you there. And just like any other exhibit, I think a staple ritual um, has to be uh, the ribbon cutting ceremony. And I think we have a video prepared for everyone since we cannot do physically the ribbon cutting ritual uh, today, unfortunately. But we did prepare a video um, showing the ribbon cutting. Oops, was it cut? Um, shall we show it again? Ah, okay. Okay, that's about it. All right. Okay, I, I thought it was cut abruptly. All right, uh, thank you so much. Um, so that's our uh, uh, art collection of the Asian Center and we invite everyone to please um, see this uh, collection um, starting today and to, uh, yeah, the exhibit is officially uh, open and uh, we hope to see you there and to give us a virtual tour of the exhibit, I'd like to call our junior museum assistant, Ms. Katrina Yap. Katrina, Finkel, are you there? Uh. Uh, yes, um, I'm Jo. Okay. Uh, Hi, there's everybody. a video prepared. All right. Okay, please play Hi, the video. Everyone. Thank you. Welcome to Collecting Histories, Gems from the Asian Center Art Collection. We'll be presenting the highlights of the collection today. First, we guide you through a production of the doors of the Romulo Hall, serving as the entrance to the exhibit. This sturdy door features intricate carvings of a stylized sarimanok as you enter the exhibition. The first two artworks you will see as you enter are these two landscapes. The Chinese painting, Cove with Vermilion Trees, and the fishing village that uses leaf art. These next two artworks feature idyllic scenes. The first is of the three court ladies. The artwork made from mother of pearl inlay on lacquered board. And the second painting is of the Sakura and the Todaiji. These next set of artworks feature a variety of mediums of the collection. The first one on the left is the lacquered paint on wood of the Ho Chi Minh and the people. 
The next is a reproduction of A Picture of a Performance by Utagawa Toyokuni the first. The third artwork is a silk brocade weaving of the crane bamboo and plum blossoms. The fourth one is a monochrome wood block print of two individuals watering the fields. And the last artwork is, of course, by the late Neil DeLorecon's colored print of the Mangingisda. The next set of artworks were gifted to the Asian Center. For example, this painting of Guanyin, the Bodhisattva of Mercy, was presented after a lecture was given in the University of the Philippines in 1962 by the artist Zheng Huoshi from Taiwan. These three artworks were also given to the Asian Center. The first one, a landscape, forest stream in twilight, was given by the late Professor Virginia Flor Agbayani. She was also a professor emeritus from the College of Fine Arts. The artwork at the center is an image of the Angkor Wat, painted on cowhide. Did you know that this artwork lights up? We do hope you could see this in person soon. This artwork was given by Ambassador Sihanouk of Cambodia in 1954. The third artwork is by the Indian modernist M. Sivanesan, called Preparing the Evening Meal. This artwork was given by the Indian Embassy. This next artwork is by the artist Ping Shan, entitled Flowers of the Four Seasons. This was also made and presented to the Asian Center during a workshop here in the college. The next set of artworks depict scenes of war and conflict. Highlighted is Sir Neil Doloricon's The Continuing Revolution, an artist print in color. It is a rare print as only 16 prints were made. The artwork on the right is a battle scene between the Siamese and Burmese with elephants. On the wall to the left, you will see Varus Rosal's painting, which is a scene from the Battle of Manila during the Second World War. The next artwork is a scroll painting of a hundred cranes, a gift from the Xiamen University Institute of South China Seas Studies. These artworks may be familiar to the Asian Center's alumni as these were displayed in Roma Lohol before. The next set of artworks are depictions of the Madonna and Child. The artwork on the left and right were painted in the Nihonga style of painting. The first is a reproduction by Sakimizu, and the solo Madonna is by the artist Misa. The Madonna and Child at the center is a brocade weaving. The last four artworks are of portraits and of ethnographic interests. The artwork on the left is the Bintana ni Bibiana by Sherry with the medium uh, acrylic painted on plywood. This was donated by the late Dr. Mario Miklat. And the artwork on the right depicts three court lady musicians, possibly of Thai provenance of silk screen print on silk. And for the last two artworks, um, the artwork on the left is a portrait of Dr. Sun Yat-sen by the artist Li Lin Chia. Dr. Sun Yat-sen became pro the provisional first president of the Republic of China and the first leader of the Nationalist Party of China. The artwork on the right depicts a tiger hunt, with the medium being pigment on silk.
And these were the highlights of the exhibition. Um, if you would like to look at the exhibition again after this tour, here are a few tips in navigating the space. So you may opt to play the guided tour again and it will run on its own. You just have to wait for a bit. If not, you can also click on the next guide point and then it will take you to the next set of artworks. You can also click on the previous guide point if you think it went by too fast. So you can use these buttons to navigate the exhibition space. Should you want to walk around more freely, you can click on the floor and it will move you to that spot. And if you want to move uh, to see the other sides, you can click hold and drag your mouse to look at the left and up, even upwards or right, even downwards. So you can also, you can actually also click on the walls, but it will just zoom you in and it gets uh, disorienting. So it's preferable you just click on the floor instead. You may also, Click on the artworks and it will give you a full view. And it also pops up with more information in them. So this was the battle scene between the Siamese and the Burmese with elephants. And yes. Um, We can do one more quick walk around this virtual exhibition just for you to see the space. Um, should you have enjoyed this exhibition and would like to comment uh, more suggestions or more um, questions, you may message us uh, here in this chat box. Other than that, um, this tour and tutorial has ended. We do hope you enjoyed this um, presentation and our um, exhibition. And we hope to see you in our future exhibitions as well. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Prinkle, for being our virtual tour guide. And there's a question here on the chat box. You might want to address it. Where can we can we share the website link to the virtual museum? Um, it will be available right after this um, All right. program. <laughs> All right. Thanks. So please stay put. I believe that should, will be flashed on our website and uh, the official website of the Asian Center and Facebook and Twitter and all the other portals, right? Right. Yeah, yes. Um, yes. Okay. Here are some pictures of the actual exhibit. Uh, yes. So we did um, physically mount them up, and should you want to visit these uh, the actual exhibit, you may set an appointment with us, and we'll okay. yeah we'll flash a contact info. Yeah. Okay. So have you flashed it? Yes. So that's the online exhibit link for everyone to know. To those who are with us today, you might want to access that later after this program. But for now, thank you, Franco. Um, thank you for giving us a virtual tour. And my personal favorites have to be the hundred cranes, the uh, Bintana ni Bibiana, and the fishing village. And I really am excited to see these um, artworks, these masterpieces um, in person, hopefully um, before the year ends. <laughs> so thank you very much um, for the exhibit. And congratulations to uh, Dr. Santa Maria, um, to Crinkle, uh, uh, who else? To so other staff uh, who put all this collection together um, um, in time for the 66th anniversary, founding anniversary celebration of the Asian Center. Thank you very much, sir.
Um, and at this point, of course, uh, we have come to uh, the end part of this program and formally close this afternoon. So there, I'd like to call Assistant Dean for Academic Affair Affairs, Dr. Tina S. Clemente, for the closing remarks. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So um, good afternoon, everybody. So for the closing remarks, I'll keep it short. While a sober uh, the Newman would be an elegant way to cap the exhibit launch. I cannot help but express that I am absolutely over the moon about this exhibit. Uh, to be honest, I am still very enthused over the collection, and I must admit that's my first time to see it. On one hand, the exhibit expresses where we want to go with Asian Center's cultural program, especially that our graduate programs at the, uh, in the Asian Studies and Philippine Studies um, areas include the interrogation of culture in a comparative perspective. Politics, governance, external relations, and development are not, only, are not the only intellectual preoccupations of our programs, equally salient is the study of culture as a vital dimension in itself and in understanding the other dimensions. On the other hand, the wonderful collection underscores that art pieces or artifacts are not static representations of varied milieus at a certain point in time, but they are repositories of boundless stories that allow us to reimagine cultural expressions. While these expressions may be specific in that they speak about the artist's soul or the nuances of a culture, they also tell a story of our relatedness as human beings in the sense that across various cultures, we share a capacity to creatively celebrate life. And this is precisely why I like the notion of collecting histories rather than merely gathering artifacts. We want to collect and curate meaningful histories in the hopes of enriching our collective meaning making as we continue to imagine and reimagine Asia as a site for understanding and connectedness. So no pressure on the team, but cheers to more gems from the cultural program in the near future. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the members of the team um, uh, earlier uh, Dr. Salero mentioned some, but I'd like to um, mention everyone who worked on the collection. Of course, uh, Professor Santa Maria, who's, who, uh, who's the curator of this exhibit, but also Noel San Andres um, and Eric Aguilar, um, Danae Pantano, Katrina Nicole Yap, uh, that's Crinkle, um, Maika Frena and Frankie Bogok, and Mark Manliklik and the other... Um, uh, custodial and utility staff who helped bring the pieces from Romulo Hall. And we also would like to thank uh, Janus Nolasco and, and Princess Cruz for helping out with the promotion. So thank you again. Good job, everybody. I really, really love this exhibit. And I hope um, everybody, everybody's as excited as I am in um, going through the virtual and maybe also the physical exhibit. Maraming salamat, magandang hapon. Maraming salama. Thank you very much, Dr. Clemente. What a way to end our program this afternoon no? with so much hope and inspiration for us. And a lot of activities, I think, are still lined up in celebration of the 66th anniversary of the Asian Center. We have an upcoming webinar series. Dean uh, Sevilla mentioned already Mandala, the Tessellation of Culture exhibit, uh, an online exhibit also happening soon. Um, and there's another, like a roundtable um. Uh, discussion um, event also happening before the uh, end of this month as part of our uh, celebration. So we look forward to having you as uh, uh, having you uh, as our uh, participants, so, uh, attendees to all of these exciting activities of the Asian Center and so much more to come. And uh, um, and uh, to keep you updated on all these happenings, no? because all of these activities just flash very quickly on our website and also on our Facebook uh, page. Please, I encourage you to, uh, and also your friends, to follow us and subscribe to the Asian Center Twitter account, to the Asian Center Facebook page, and also please check out the Asian Center official website. Um, and so you can also see uh, some of the information on upcoming activities. Yeah, thank you, Janus, for flashing those activities that, that I have just mentioned. And we we'll hope to see you once again. Uh, and uh, this has been Professor Jocelyn Salero. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Joe. Congratulations to the team. Congratulations. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to us. Don't we have a virtual forum?